What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at generators in Python, how to implement them, why you should use them, and also the advantages of using them. But before we actually go into what generators are, let's take a step back and look at a function that just returns back an iterable. Now, when I say iterable, I mean something like a list or a tuple. Let's go ahead and create a function. We'll say even numbers take in a max number and we'll say list or um, numbers equals an empty list for starters and then for number in range max number we'll say if the number is even so number modular 2 equals 0 then numbers dot append number and then finally let's just return numbers okay so let's call this we'll say numbers even numbers and then we'll pass an eight and then we'll print out numbers if i run this now we get zero two four and six not including the eight of course because we're using the range however one thing you will notice is that um, where loading all of this, this list is loaded all into memory. Each element is in memory. And this can be kind of a problem if you have a very large list that you want, or like if you have a very memory intensive operation going on. So let's say, for example, we extended this to like a very large number. Now, if I run this, you can see that the console is kind of like waiting around. It's not really doing anything. That's because it's looping over all of this and adding each element into our numbers list. And a, this is an example of a very, um, you know, memory intensive task because we're loading so much into memory. So this will end up becoming a very large list. Now this is where this the whole concept of generators can be very useful. Now, in order to create a generator or a generator function, we can do the following. So let's go ahead and improve our even numbers function, turn it into a generator function. And to do that, we'll just say generator even numbers. And I'm just actually gonna put this as eight. And then we'll say max number. And for this, we'll do a four number in range max number. Notice as well how we haven't actually declared like a list, an empty list. And then all we have to do is say yield. Actually, before that, we have to check to see if number is actually even. So, and then here we can just say yield number. Now, if we take this number, numbers, and set it to even or generator, even numbers and let's say eight we can print out numbers like so now if i run this we of course get back our old list because we're printing that out but we also get back this generator object now this generator object or this generator function allows us to create a function that behaves like an iterator so it's behaving somewhat like this However, we're just we're getting back a generator object. Now let's actually make use of this. And to make use of it, we can just say next, call this next function, hit run, and we get back zero. And zero is the first element of our list. Let's just repeat this a couple times. If I run this, we get zero, two, four. And if I do one more time, we get zero, two, four, and six. So each of, e each of these elements. Now let's have a look at what we're doing here. With this yield statement here, this is best used when you want to have a function that returns a sequence that we want to iterate over. I mean, we're manually iterating with this next and all this next really does is just ask for the next result in an iterator. When I say iterator, in this case, think of just a list. Uh, an iterator can of course be other things like a dictionary or a tuple. However, in our case, where we're using, uh, we, we can treat this as a list, but all this yield is doing is just returning 
um, or this yield in this function, just treat this function as like a sequence that we want to iterate over. However, the best thing about this is that we're not loading every element in a iterator into memory. We're loading each one individually. So first we're loading zero when we called next to the first time. And then when they call the second time, the memory is getting rid of the zero and is actually giving us two. And then for the third time, it forgets about the two, it gives us the four and then the six. Now we can actually give this a very large number and it will work very well as well. So if I run this again, I hit ran, I, like I ran it, like I don't know if you saw it, but if I hit run again, but we have no issue. When we added a number like this to the example before with our even numbers, where we just return a list, you know, it pretty much like paused for a rather long time and we'd probably be waiting quite some time for it to finish. But in our case, it just did it very like quickly. I can then just call it this again and we get zero, two, four, six, eight. And that's because it's not loading every single element into memory, it's doing it step by step. Every time we call next, it loads it into memory. And that's the great thing about generators is that it's very performant when it comes to very, when it comes to memory intensive tasks. Now, again, all this next is doing is just returning the next result in an iterator. But now we can actually iterate over this. I'm gonna go back and replace this as uh, eight. And if I run this now, we get back zero, two, four, six. So zero, two, four, and six. And then we, well, we should be, well, we would expect eight as a human, but because we've kind of capped it off, um, we get this stop iteration. And that's because it's just reached the end of our iterable as this generator even numbers is returning a function that behaves like an iterable. Now let's just comment all of this out. And now what we can do is just loop over numbers. So for number in numbers, return number. If I run this, we get back for number in numbers, return number. Why are you complaining? Oh, not return, sorry. We need to print this out. So if I run this, zero, two, four, and six. I can add way more to this. Of course, it'll take some time to like print it all out, but like you can see it just grows and it's not loading all of this into memory. It's just hitting each one, loads it, prints it out, removes it, loads it, prints it out, removes it. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, that's when that's it when it comes to a um, a generator. You can also do this as like a list comprehension, the same way we have with list comprehension. So we can say something like numbers equals. I'm just gonna add an enter here, but numbers equals, and then x for x in range. We can say eight, and let me just actually back this up a bit. So as a list comprehension, we would have something like x for x in range, say eight. And then if x is even, then return it. So now if I print out numbers, if I run this, we get back a zero, two, four, and six. It's printing out the old one. I'm just gonna comment that out. But yeah, that's it when it comes to a list comprehension but we can turn this into a generator just by replacing the square brackets with normal brackets. Now, if I return this, if I print this, we get back generator, and then you can just loop over numbers again, just like before for number in numbers, print number. If I run this, we get back zero, two, four, and six. I again can add a huge amount to this and then it will print it out one by one. But yeah, that's essentially what the uh, a generator is. You can see or you can tell if a function is a generator function just by checking if it has a yield. If there's a yield in there, then you know it's a generator. And it's important to note that generators do not store any of the items of an iterable in memory, unlike with lists, which they do. So in our first case, every element is stored in memory because we're appending it to this list here, which is then of course stored in memory. 
with a generator, the values of a generator are computed at runtime and then forgotten. And yeah, that's a very useful case for a generator. I definitely recommend using them when it comes to creating functions that return something that you will then iterate over rather than returning an iterable itself. But that sums it up for this lesson. I hope you uh, found some value in this. They're extremely useful to use and I would probably 99 out of 100 times use them if you are creating a function that returns an iterable. But other than that, if you wanna check this code out, this uh, link of this replit will be made available in the description. I also have a Discord channel or server, sorry. If you wanna come in and say hi, feel free to do so. The link for that is also in the description. But anyway, feel free to give this a subscribe and a like, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.